the La Crosse Public Library Archives presents Dark La Crosse Stories, a series in collaboration with the La Crosse Tribune. Dark La Crosse is a suite of programs that feature the seedier side of La Crosse history and also include a downtown walking tour, a trolley tour, and an annual stage production with new content each year. On August 27, 1920, residents of La Crosse opened their morning paper only to read a most grisly story. Well, let's see what we have this morning. <clears throat> Nick Beeson, aged 37, farmer on Brinkman's Ridge, just this side of the La Crosse County line, three miles north of Coon Valley, went into the kitchen of his home about 1.30 p.m. yesterday, told his wife to go out and pick him some strawberries, and while she was on the errand, blew the top of his head off with a double-barreled shotgun. The deceased is survived by a widow and three children, all minors. Oh, what a terrible story. What a shame. Those poor children. Yet, in less than a month, on Sunday, September 19, more bad news came from the Beeson household. Honey, listen to this. Mrs. Nick Beeson and her son Harry are at St. Francis Hospital suffering with severe burns about the head, chest, and arms sustained in a fire which destroyed their home. Awakening at 2 o'clock in the morning to find the house in flames, Mrs. Beeson and her son were forced to plunge through a wall of fire to make their escape and were badly burned. Two other children escaped unharmed. Poor woman. First she loses her husband to suicide and now this. One month later, on October 19, the story expanded with information that shed new light on Nick Beeson's death. Now, let's see. John Byer, formerly employed on the farm of the recently deceased Nick Beeson on Brinkman's Ridge, was arraigned in county court today charged with a statutory offense in connection with Mrs. Nick Beeson. Huh. Well, no wonder old Nick offed himself. Let's see, he pleaded not guilty and was held for examination. The complaint charges Beyer with committing the crime on June 15th of this year. On August 26th, Nick Beeson, who had been living apart from his wife, sleeping in the barn while his wife and children occupied the farmhouse, was found dead in the barn. He had ended his life by shooting himself through the mouth with a shotgun. Some weeks later, the Beeson farmhouse was burned. The headlines kept coming. Just three days later came a shocking revelation regarding that statutory offense. Honey, honey, listen to this. Beeson girl tells of family quarrels over John Byer. Daughter testifies that she saw her mother and Byer together on a lounge. What? I know it must be lonely up there on that ridge, but really? Are you sure you aren't reading excerpts from a detective dime novel? Says here, Gertrude Beeson, 14-year-old daughter of Nick and Helen Beeson, testified in a courtroom bursting with all the families of Brinkman's Ridge that her mother and father quarreled frequently over the gossip he heard concerning Bear and his wife. She said her mother always denied the charges. Three years ago, Gertrude asserted she returned to the house after working in the fields and saw her mother and Bayer lying on a lounge. She said her father and Bayer had quarrels as well and that her father had slept alone for the last two years in the barn. Gertrude told her uncle about this and it was on his complaint that Bayer was arrested. Oh, that's just wrong. But there's more. Gertrude also noted that she often saw her mother take platters of food into the large closet of the farmhouse and that the plates would always come back empty. Why would she do that? That young girl must be making up this story to get attention. Well, I don't think her mother was feeding ghosts in the closet. It says here that Gertrude heard footsteps in the closet as though someone was pacing back and forth. A little over a week later, Byer was in more hot water with the law. John Byer, farmhand for the recently deceased Nick Beeson, was taken into custody late Saturday and is being held pending the outcome of the investigation of the burning of the Beeson home in September. The inquiry is being made by the Deputy State Fire Marshal. Byer was questioned Sunday, and Mrs. Beeson will be coming to La Crosse probably late today to be questioned. 
Beyer is now under bail for a further hearing this week on statutory charges. Good grief, this guy. First he's messing around with his boss's wife, then he burns their house down. What next? On November 2, 1920, women in the United States were allowed to vote for the first time in an election for federal officers, including president. But readers of the La Crosse Tribune were more interested in learning of the next episode in the drama unfolding on Brinkman Ridge. This same day, the La Crosse Tribune broke the news that Mrs. Beeson had confessed that she and the farmhand John Byer were lovers, and it was Byer that killed her husband in self-defense. The deputy state fire marshal was responsible for finding inconsistencies in the lovers' stories, and the lovers broke very quickly. Nick Beeson's death was not a suicide. Byer claimed he was hiding in that hall closet in Beeson's front room from April to the time of the house was burned in November. On August 26, the day of Nick Beeson's death, Byer said he overheard an argument between the couple. Nick Beeson threatened to kill his wife with a knife, so Byer leapt from his hiding spot, shot Nick with his revolver, and then blew off the top of his head with a shotgun. Now both Byer and Helen Beeson were in custody in the La Crosse County Jail. Here's the latest scoop on the Brinkman Ridge story. Saturday, the body of Nick Beeson was exhumed from his grave in the Mormon Cooley Cemetery so doctors could determine the real cause of death on August 26. Both the state and the defense have been in doubt as to how Beeson was really killed, whether the shotgun charge killed him or whether he was first mortally wounded by some other weapon. Let me see that. Get this! Mrs. Beeson is still in the county jail being unable to obtain $2,000 bail, the amount set by the court for her arraignment on a statutory charge. Bayer, also arraigned yesterday, is being held without bail on a charge of murder. I suppose the court thought he'd hightail himself out of here if he reached for reach bail. Well, the doctors have definitely ruled out suicide as how Nick met his end. Now the question is, was it in self-defense or not? On November 18, John Byer pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison at Waupon State Prison. He related his version of what went down on the fateful day back in August. Now, let's see what he has to say today. While Byer was hidden in the closet, he overheard an argument in the kitchen where Beeson threatened to kill his wife. Distraught, Byer leapt from the closet and confronted Beeson, who was wielding a large kitchen knife. With his revolver, Byer shot Beeson on the forehead, but he did not die immediately. Byer then blew off the top of Beeson's head with a shotgun. Byer's attorney pleaded to the court for leniency as the farmhand was only 21 years old and had been in the power of Mrs. Beeson since he was 17. Oh, Nelly. Hmm. Before sentencing, Byer said he was sorry for what he'd done. Yeah, now that he's had a taste of what jail is like, I bet he's sorry. Three days later, lacrosse residents read this news. One of the most pathetic love scenes ever enacted in lacrosse county jail was the parting of Mrs. Helen Beeson and John Byer. Byer was taken to the room where Mrs. Beeson was awaiting the news from the courtroom. For several seconds, they just stared at each other. And then Mrs. Beeson spoke. May I? John, will you be true to me? She asked in quavering tones. I will be true to you, Helen, so help me God, answered by her in solemn voice. John, I want you to be true to me all the time. Maybe you will get out of prison in a few years. I will always be true to you no matter what happens to me, said Mrs. Beeson. Then worlds seemed to fall apart. They stood face to face and simply gazed into each other's eyes. Sheriff Lund broke the silence by saying, Well, I suppose it's all right for you to kiss each other for the last time. It was the cue that both seemed to be waiting for. They rushed into each other's arms. Then it was time for Byer to return to his cell. As her lover left the room, Mrs. Beeson tottered towards a chair and burst into tears that shook her body. You've got to be careful. <laughs> wow. Two days later, Mrs. Helen Beeson was sentenced for adultery to two years in Wapon State Prison, the same prison where John Byer would serve his life sentence for the murder of Nick Beeson. Interestingly, both Byer and Helen Beeson had been represented by the same lawyer. That lawyer also administered the Beeson estate, which included finding permanent places for the five Beeson children. Unbelievably, 
This story continues with even more twists and turns in the next episode.